It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Buffalo Bills. And it comes your way next on Madden Football. We are about 15 miles south of downtown Buffalo at Highmark Stadium in Orchard Park. But today, two AFC teams set to do battle. It should be a good one, as it'll be the Jacksonville Jaguars taking on the Buffalo Bills. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gauden. Now, Charles, you and I, we've done a lot of games together. Always seems like we're rehashing the same storylines. Turnovers, of course, always a big story. Quarterback play, running backs, yada, yada, yada. But getting ready for this one, one word kept coming to mind, and that's preparation. Well, it's critical to be prepared physically, mentally. When you think about getting ready for an NFL game, you have to wonder, what will they throw at us that maybe we haven't seen before? Two-minute drill? Maybe different things like that. Got to be prepared. You're exactly right. And we are underway in Buffalo. Taken at the goal line. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. With well, the Buffalo offense coming out, and it is Josh Allen who is at the helm. And in this league, there are many quarterbacks who have their most success running the ball, while there are others who have big arms. There aren't too many guys who can do both. And at the end of many games, this guy leads his team not just in passing, but in rushing as well. Allen going to look to throw on the first play. This one complete to Curtis Samuel. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. 13 yards on the game's opening play. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. On first down, Allen. It's complete to Cook. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. 23 yards on the play. Boy, a lot of moving parts on this play, but what a nice design to leak the running back out to the left and send him down the field. And a good job spotting him and hitting him for a big play. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. They run for the first time with James Cook. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Now Allen throwing on second down. That's caught by his tight end, Dawson Knox. The Bills passing game, getting them down the field. They've got another first down. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because, really, they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. The second down play, not much better than the first, just a gain of one there. 
I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Now play number seven of the drive as they're looking at a third and ten. Now Allen. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Trayvon Walker able to drop him for a loss of two, and that will bring up fourth down. And that sack there, that likely brings out the field goal unit, so they might have to settle for three here on their opening drive. They did some nice things, getting things started there, moving the ball downfield, but taking that sack on third down, that lets the air out of the momentum balloon just a little bit. The kick by Bass is good, and the Bills' opening drive yields three. Well, when they began that opening drive, they didn't have the best field position, but they were able to move the ball enough, Charles, to just get in his range to take the 3 nothing advantage. Absolutely, because considering where they began that series, I think they're pretty happy to be sitting at 3-zip right now. So after knocking through the field goal, here's Bass to kick it away. So here are the Jags now set to get their first drive. They're led by the number one overall pick in the 2021 draft, Trevor Lawrence. And you want to talk about enormous expectations being placed on a quarterback. How about what Trevor Lawrence faced coming out of college? But the good thing for him... He's used to it. He had the same type of expectations leaving high school and going to Clemson. They always expect him to be a franchise savior, whatever team he joins. And to his credit, he shouldered those expectations and he's doing everything in his power to follow through. They'll start on the ground, ETN. He is taken down at the 21 after a short gain of two. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it, sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. On first and 10, it's ETN, and he'll take this ahead for about four, second down coming up. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Line of scrimmage, the 24. This is second and six. Now Lawrence. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Here's Lawrence to throw. That is caught, and he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Lawrence finding Kirk there for the Jaguar first. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere, and they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people, but you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well, and that's what they just did on that play. Couple of first downs to kick off the drive. Here's first and 10 up at the 46. Back to the ground with ETN. Shifts past him at the 45. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. We often give credit to the O-line there. Two tight end formation. Those tight ends block pretty well also. Yeah, and that's one of the most dynamic positions in football now. The tight ends who can block at the line of scrimmage at the point of attack, and they can also get downfield and catch the football. And they'll throw on first down with Lawrence. 
Open man is Kirk, complete. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down, second and right at a yard. Second down and a little more than a yard here. Straight ahead, ETN. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. Vision is so important for the man in the middle because his ability to, to, to look through all the clutter that's happening in front of him, diagnose a play, and then go make it and finish it, that's when the great ones know that they have the goods. Ninth play coming up here on this drive. This is third and a yard. Lawrence. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. That one good for seven as this long drive continues and the chains move again. Solid opening drive so far, Charles. They've moved this football into field goal range, but you know that they want to cap this off with six and not three. Absolutely. As one of the better coaches in the league always tells me, on offense, I want to throw body blows all game long and finish it with uppercuts. Well, here are the body blows right now. He's hoping in one uppercut will take care of the end of this drive. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script, you go through your play calling, you go through all the stuff and establish things, and it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. And this is not going to work as planned. He's going to be met and dropped behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. That's the danger, Charles, of running plays like this for your wide receiver. They can hit big, or they can be duds. Yeah, you're exactly right about that, because if they're forced to try and go around defenders behind the line of scrimmage, sometimes you can give yardage in order to gain it. But in this case, they gave yardage and didn't get it back. A good display of power, but it will only get him just inside the five to the four. 41 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. From the shotgun, Lawrence. Got his man, it's caught. Touchdown, Jaguars. Devin Duvernay from four yards out. And the Jaguars are able to answer the early three points and take a first quarter lead. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. Extra point right down the middle. And that makes it a 7-3 lead. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. So here come the Bills out for their second drive. Last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get them three. Now here they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience... How much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now, the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it, and he goes out and gets the job done for them. But I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. And I give him four yards there. It'll be second and six.
After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. Second quarter now in Buffalo. It's the Bills in control of the football. From the 25, here's second and six. As they've got it as we resume action. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. Well, certainly not his best throw that time, and not a good time to make it, Charles, when they were a nickel with five defensive backs on the field. And that's exactly why you have those five DBs out there. You want extra speed on the field, guys who have ball skills and understand what the passing game can do and gives them a chance to react and make a play on the football, and they take one of those away. Jacksonville offense gets the ball back. Travis Etienne and company head back out there. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, you've really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals. Throwing now Lawrence on first down. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six, and it's second down. That's a staple of this offense, drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Ball on the 28-yard line. Here's a second down and four. They'll bring a receiver in motion left. Now he's going to get it on the jet sweep. And yeah, that one never got off the ground. He's going to be stopped up well behind the line of scrimmage. They'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. Well, as a wide out, when you take that handoff and you're coming around the edge, you're expecting to see nothing but empty space in front of you. But if not... Well, things can go south in a hurry, and that's exactly what we saw on that play with a loss. He's going to let this one go deep. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Travis Etienne, 31 yards, as his guys are able to extend their lead. Well, he wasn't the guy they were initially going for, but after going through the progressions, it worked. When you have plenty of people who can catch the football, you don't always have to go to your primary target, and sometimes that target is actually covered. Nice job coming off of that and getting it to someone who was open. Yeah, the man out of the backfield gets in for the score. Now for the point after. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it was Travis Etienne on the touchdown reception capping the drive. Here's the Jaguar kick team now as they run up and send this one away. Fielded just outside the goal line. Powering his way forward. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive in particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. Yeah, and some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to want to look to hit a couple shorter passes and get a little momentum back that way. But for the defense, that goal's not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you've got to watch them a little bit because in coverage, they may cut down their gaps a little bit, maybe their splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. How many times do we say in this game is speed kills and it does it in so many different ways. In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary, and that led to a really nice gain. And meanwhile, Allen's throw complete to Hollins. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, 
You're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. On second down, Cook. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Four yards the pickup, first down. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. They run again on first down. Cook. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. 50 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Again, it's Cook. And he'll get about five here as he'll take this down inside the 20-yard line. And when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. Now second and five. And now they'll throw with Allen. And he's got it. Touchdown! Dawson knocks a touchdown grab from Josh Allen. And the Bills have got it back to within a score. As a general rule, quarterbacks don't want to lock in on a receiver before the ball is snapped. But in this case, based on the matchup he thought he was going to get, it was favorable for his tight end. He locked in on him early and found him for a touchdown. The Tyler Bass on for the extra point attempt. And he's got it. That cuts the lead. It's now 14 to 10. A drive that time of six plays. And it culminates in a Bills touchdown. After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. The Jaguars getting set to go. So for this offense, Charles, remember drive one made it to the end zone. Drive two resulted in a touchdown as well. Now they'll try to make it three for three. Yeah, and you know, they told us all week that this was the plan and this is what they wanted to execute, but did they really believe it would happen this well, this efficiently? I know they'll take it, and afterwards they'll say, there was never a doubt in our minds we were going to be successful in this one. Now ETN to start the drive. Oh, that's just not fair, and now room to run. And he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45-yard line. An ideal beginning of the drive there as they'll get 20 and a first down. I'm not sure how much more evidence they need, partner, than to understand that if they don't start to slow him down, it's going to be a long afternoon here at the stadium because he is just shredding them at this point. And let's face it, coming into the game, they knew he would be the focal point of their attack. This is going to take an 11-man unit on the defensive side to start making plays. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender, and that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. So first and 10 now in Buffalo territory at the 44-yard line. Running out of the gun with ETN, and just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. ETN once more. 
And he'll be close to a first down as the tackle made at the Bills 36. 69 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here this first half. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. They'll run with ETN. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. A gain of four that time as the drive continues. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? Important to do, especially early in the game like they have. And an excellent job of finding the opening as he's got this now all the way down to the 22. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. We both know it's difficult, but they've made it look effortless out there. Through the air, on the ground, they've moved the ball with relative ease. On first down, Lawrence. And his throw here is incomplete. It sort of looks like they still have some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But this defense gets two more stops. They can keep them out of that area. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. The slot man in motion right. He'll get it here on the jet sweep. And that is well read there defensively. He was looking to use his speed to get the edge, but they said no way. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time, because let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. On third down, Lawrence. And it's knocked away and incomplete. The Buffalo defense does its job, and it's fourth down. They really had a good drive going there, but a nice recovery by the defense these past few downs, able to knock that one away on third down and bring up what I think for the offense, an unexpected fourth down here. And his kick is indeed good, and that moves him up by a touchdown now at 17-10. So a nice kick there as they add three to the lead. And from what I've seen so far, Brandon, I think they've been the better of the two teams here in the first half. So even though you want the touchdown, I think that's a nice job there to put three points on the board. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Back now on offense, the Buffalo Bills. They find themselves down 17-10 as they come up on a first and 10. Allen now looks to throw. That's going to be caught by Samuel. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Nice way to start the drive. A gain of 12 and a first down. And maybe that touchdown on the previous drive has re-energized this offense a little bit. They've been kind of sluggish until then. But they're showing signs of life here. And they get good yardage that time and a first down. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. So from the 36 now, first and 10. To the air, Allen. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. He did an okay job of absorbing the hit, just couldn't secure the football through the catch. And he was right there on the spot and forced the incompletion. That's something defenders work on all the time. If you're there, make the contact, but continue to work your way through the receiver 
so that he can't possess the football and turn it into a catch. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. Throwing is Allen on third. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars 43. 21 yards there on third down. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. Here's Allen on first and 10. Going right back to Knox and again a completion. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Right back to him for 10 more and a first. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. Throwing on first down is Allen. Got it complete to Khalil Shakir. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Now the Bills are going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. Two yards to go, second down. Now Allen again. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he will have a first down here as they get into field goal range as well, down at the 17-yard line. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Here's Allen to throw it. Shakir hauls it in. Now the Bills will use the second of their timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Second down and six now. Now Allen. Quick toss to Knox. And the Bills are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. The Bills are going to go ahead and use their final timeout as they'll stop it with 13 seconds to play in half number one. A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. And again, it's Allen. And this is caught for a Bills touchdown. Curtis Samuel in the final seconds of the first half. And the Bills have a chance to tie the game here in the final seconds of the half. I don't think it's any state secret to know what they were saying before the start of this drive. Let's go and punch one in the end zone and go into the halftime feeling a heck of a lot better about ourselves. Let's go get this done. Yeah, tie things up, and then you get a brand-new ball game. Extra point by Bass, up and good. And that is going to tie our game as we approach halftime. So not much time to work with here. Nine seconds remain in the half as this one is away. 
And he brings this out past the 20 to the 24. And we will likely not see another play here as they take the knee and head into the intermission all tied. So thanks to the late touchdown, it's a time ball game here heading to break. As we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. They're all even to this point. This has the feeling of a game that could go right down to the wire. One mistake or one big play could turn out to be the difference. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. And ready to get the party started for the second half. It was an even first half, all tied on the scoreboard. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. Out come the Jaguars now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. This offense ready for the first drive of the third quarter. Well, quarters number one and two entertaining. We saw some good offense points put up, Charles, and all tied on the scoreboard. And it sets us up for what could be a really fun second half because we've seen both sides score almost at will here in the first half. And now here in the second half, getting the ball first, you've got to think, hey, we can go out and really run our offense the way we did in the first half. But if I'm a defensive player, all I'm thinking is, can I make a play to really help out my team and break this streak of offense? Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. That's a nice job there, foiling what all offenses try to do, which is control the defensive end in the running game. They want to get to the outside, and if he keeps himself free, stays on his feet, he can make a play just as he did there. Looking to throw, Lawrence. A quick throw there is incomplete. And so many times we look at the opening drive of the third quarter as a tone setter, and many coaches do emphasize it. And that's a strong performance there defensively to force incompletion and, more importantly, force a quick punting situation. Here's Logan Cook now. And surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. And here's a fair catch taken at about the 24-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Bills will take over the football with a first and 10. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively, just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to how did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. Second and six, just inside the 30.
has his man. It's Shakir. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. Third and five. Now Allen. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Bills first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That was simply snap, rock, and fire. I mean, they didn't take long at all. Slant route, and I loved where he put it. He put on the body of the receiver low so that only he can catch it. Yeah, I don't think there was any magical formula there. Defensively, that's just tough to defend. Very much so. And that way, it allows the receiver to keep his body in front of the defender and not allow him to go through him to knock the ball away. Allen now on first down. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Partner, what we're seeing so far is the defense is certainly coordinated. Both levels doing their jobs in tandem. The back helping the front, the front helping the back. The pressure got home on that last play and forced him to try and throw through contact and short of the sticks. Allen to throw once more. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. How about this defense? They came up with a couple big plays in this sequence, and none better than the one right there, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. Here's Sam Martin now, as he's on to punt for Buffalo. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. Jacksonville set to go again offensively. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Now Lawrence on first down. Quick slant caught by Kirk. That's good. The completion there for seven yards, and it'll be second down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. And he'll get two, maybe three, up near the 37. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. On play action, Lawrence able to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. He had the touchdown earlier. This one's going to get him a first down. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. So first and 10 now in Buffalo territory at the 48-yard line. Off the play fake, here's Lawrence. Oh, this is going to be caught along the sidelines. Probably shouldn't have been caught. He's going to lose yardage there. It'll be a loss of two, maybe three on the play, and that'll bring up second down. I believe I could see what they were trying to do there, but unfortunately, the back ran out of room, too close to the sideline. And for defenders, we're often taught 11 on the field. Those sidelines can become the 12th defender. It worked to the defense's advantage on that play. 
On second down, a run with Etienne. And he'll take it across midfield and into Buffalo territory. They'll get four on second down, but it leaves them with third and still nine to go. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Lawrence. That is caught. And he's got a first down as the tackle made at the Bills 33. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. Boy, everything clicking on this drive. He's four for four now, and that throw may be the best of the bunch. This offense is really humming, and they pick up another first down. A shotgun snap and a give to ETN. And he finds a little bit of room, enough for four yards. It'll be second down. Well, at the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to huddle and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. On second down, ETN once more. Bust through the tackle. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 105 yards now for ETN, and he's got a first down. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Here's Lawrence to throw. That's going to be caught by Kirk. The result, only four yards there on the play, and it's second down. In today's football, where receivers break tackles, make people miss, <laughs> get upfield for the extra yardage. When you see a play like that where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot, that's a big-time play by the defense. Lawrence will throw. And one more time, here's Kirk. It'll go as a gain of four. And it makes it third down and two yards to go. What terrifies defenses when they see slant routes thrown is that the receiver is on the move, and oftentimes he catches it and gets upfield. Has a really nice job rallying to him and stopping him for a minimal gain. A field goal would get him the lead, but that's not what they're shooting for as they come up on third down. And Ingram holds it in. Touchdown, Jaguars. Evan Ingram from eight yards out. And the Jaguars have moved out in front. A good tight end is a heck of a weapon for any quarterback, especially when you're able to create some mismatches. Sometimes they work against a linebacker. Sometimes they work against a smaller defensive back. But when they find it, they go to it, and it often results in touchdowns. A try here for the extra point. And they will take a seven-point lead now. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And Evan Ingram able to finish it off with a touchdown reception. Here's the Jaguar kick team now as they run up and send this one away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. The Bills going to take over again on offense. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions last time out. They had to punt it away, this time hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and ten here. Here's Cook as they begin on the ground. That's to about the 28, second down coming up. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. A tenth carry in the game for Cook. 
A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. They'll come up facing third and five. Allen going to throw. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. It's Devin Lloyd with a pick. And the return here is stopped at the 35-yard line. Yeah, he's just trying to throw this ball into the hole in the zone, but those windows can open and close quickly, especially in the middle of the field. So if the timing's not right, we'll see interceptions like that one right there. Trevor Lawrence and the Jacksonville Jaguars back again. The returns on the last drive, pretty good. Seven for seven, touchdown pass. Probably take that, right? I would say so. I mean, when you're cutting them apart that way, feeling so accurate, so confident going downfield, and then able to culminate by putting it in the end zone, oh, yeah, he's feeling real good right now. Now he'll try to carry that over to this drive. ETN up the middle. He'll work his way up the middle for a gain of about four, second down. An opportunity to get a drive started here at the end of the third quarter. What you're trying to do is break the game down a little bit. Don't let your guys see too deep into the game, into the future, and say, oh, we got to get here. No, right here, right in front of them. Melt the clock down, get to the fourth quarter, try and keep going. And try to keep that lead. Exactly. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Buffalo. It's Jaguar football here, and they'll look to extend their lead as we begin quarter number four. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. This offense so far on third down, they've been tough to stop. Eight for ten so far. This will be third and six. Duvernay in motion. And they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep. And this is not going to work as planned. He's going to be met and dropped behind the line of scrimmage. He lost two, and it brings up fourth. Now they try to catch him by surprise there on third down, but this defense, they were all over the jet sweep. And it's oftentimes all about what you're doing on the backside of the defense, whether it's the defensive end or the outside backer. Who's setting the edge? And if they don't get blown off the line of scrimmage, they can really wreck a play. And in this case, they were able to make the tackle for a loss as a result. So that's CD, an important one here in the fourth quarter. And that importance cannot be overstated. All eyes on both sidelines were staring that one down all the way. The significance is that they made it a two-score game. Still lots of time left to go, but likely that was their goal at the start of the drive. Get three points, make it a two-score game, and they were able to get it done. Here's the Jaguar kick team now as they run up and send this one away. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And here come the Bills. And the complexion of this one has changed a fair amount. That last field goal made it a two-score game, so they need to get points out of this drive relatively quickly. Allen and the Bills now with a first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Quick slant to Shakir. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That'll be a pickup of 10 as they try to recover from this 10-point deficit. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle, they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. Allen's throw here, take it in by Knox. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. 
A good pick up there, 21 yards. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple of scores, and they've really got to get some yards in chunks, and they know the defense doesn't want to give those up, but they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? First down, here's the run with Cook. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That's a heck of an effort from Josh Allen getting in there defensively. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Now Cook, he's got it off the draw. And he's going to take it down to about the 35 here. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 15-yard line. A big third down pickup of 20 yards. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and can serve as much as possible. Up the middle, it's Cook, powering forward. And he is into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. James Cook, a 15-yard touchdown run. And the Bills have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. In as many coaches' meetings as we sit in, we hear the word finish all the time, don't we? And on that play, the back actually finished getting into the end zone, breaking the last tackle. Tried to wrap up, tried to use the proper technique, just wasn't able to get it done. Here's Bass now for the extra point. And the lead is down to a field goal now. So the drive there took six plays. And it was James Cook capping all of that off with a touchdown run. After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. Their lead back down to one score after the touchdown a moment ago. First down's a must on this drive as they start out here first and 10. They go play action now. Lawrence, a short throw to Ingram. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. From the 25, here's second and three. Now Lawrence. Side is going to be caught by Kirk. And Kirk is going to have the Jaguars first down as he'll get this up across the 30-yard line. But right there, he rose to the occasion late in a close game. It's something he thought about, dreamed about, and worked on throughout his career. Because in these types of situations, he wasn't going to allow extra coverage to keep him from getting the football. A give to ETN running right. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. If you can keep getting gains like that, Charles, with the lead here in the fourth quarter, I mean, keep running it, right? No doubt about it, but what the offense coordinator has to do is understand they're going to continue to stack the line. What runs do you have in your arsenal that'll work against a stacked box and continue to move the ball? They go play action with Lawrence. 
Got his man. It's the tight end Strange with it. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. And this one not going anywhere. They get him at the 44 for a gain of just a yard. That felt like a trap because it looked to me like the opposing front was on that play from the get-go. They had everyone crashing the ball carrier before he even made the line, and they hold him to just a yard. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. And a pretty good burst there as he'll get this across midfield and down to the 46. Ten yards there, good enough for a Jags first down. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave them with a second and just a few inches left. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination. Looked pretty good. How about that? Let's see, if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. Now Lawrence. He targets Ingram for another grab. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. <laughs> Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. On first and ten, it's Lawrence. And this nearly an interception, but it's incomplete. Well, a turnover really would have helped him there, but not to be. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. Now a second and ten. Here's a give to ETN. And able to get about three as he's taken down right at the 20. Now, the objective there, I mean, yes, the positive gain, that's nice, but work some clock. Yeah, you're exactly right, but the problem for them is still within a possession, so they can't just sit on it running the ball. They'll have to find a way to throw it effectively as well. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far, and the crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. Another toe for ETN, and this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. That'll back him up two yards and also bring up fourth. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This to swell the lead to six. And his kick here is good. And that will add three more to their lead. It pushes it up to six. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, they're a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because <laughs> they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. Well, and a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden, they're down. Here's the Jaguar kick team now as they run up and send this one away. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Allen and the Bills now. Down by six. Just over two minutes to go. They'll have one play here just north of the two-minute warning.
On first down, Allen. That's taken in by Knox. And he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45-yard line. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and ten now. To throw is Allen. On the throw, led him too much that time. It's incomplete. Couple extra defensive backs out there in the dime, and because of that, really not many places to throw the football, if any. And typically, what would you want to do against that dime? Run the football. You want to run the ball, but you can't do it in this situation. Not nearly enough time on the clock. You having to really navigate against a tough defense presented against you. Throwing Allen. Little pitch and catch to the tight end, Knox. It drives some people crazy to see those short throws underneath. They've got to find a way to gash the defense downfield. What can they draw up now? Time to find out on a third and eight. Allen. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. With that incompletion, reality is staring them right in the face. This entire game is down to the next snap. Here we go. This is fourth down. Here's Allen. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is brought down, but not before reaching the 30. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. And with that, they still have a chance, partner. Yeah, that ball's knocked away. This game is probably over. But guess what? We still got some ball to play. Plenty of time left, plus all three timeouts. Here's first and 10. Now Allen. Nice, solid game there, partner, but the clock is starting to become his enemy. Absolutely. Every second right now, more and more precious as it ticks. Now the Bills are going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds left to play. Oh, I hate that stuff. It's showtime, Let's go. baby. Let's go now. Let's go. Make plays, y'all. Make plays. They want to go. Here's second down and three. Now Allen. And this is caught at the eight. Now the Bills will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. Now first and goal. Throwing is Allen. Buying time to his left. And he is in as they have tied it late here in the final minute of the fourth quarter. Now they can boot it through on the always important extra point, and then their defense has to hold up their end of the bargain. And there's something that you've pointed out in numerous games that we've worked. Okay, the excitement's going on. Everyone's celebrating over there. Who's calling up the defense to make sure they're focused because they still have some work to do? Bass on for the extra point. And they have taken the lead here in this fourth quarter. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it's capped off by the touchdown and the ever-critical extra points. So it is a one-point lead here in the final minute of action. to the touchdown Bass to kick it away on the return Devin Duvernay and he'll take it a yard or so past the 20 call it the 21 so now all eyes shift to the Jags 
trailing by a point 34 seconds to go they've surrendered a double digit lead but can rescue themselves late as they come up on first down Lawrence flush to his right and some space here the Jaguar is going to go ahead and use their first timeout as he'll stop it with 27 seconds showing on the clock two timeouts still in their back pocket it's first and ten. Throwing now, Lawrence. He'll find ETN out of the backfield. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. They'll come up now on second down. Here's Lawrence. Open man is Duvernay. And he's got a first down as the tackle made at the Bills 41-yard line. And the clock will now stop as a timeout is called with five seconds left. And now it all rests on the right foot of their kicker. This from long, very long range. The Bills are going to go ahead and use their final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. So on is their kicker, and it's down to this. He's hit three times already, and this for the win. And I tell you what, he got it from 58. That had lots of leg behind it. And it's celebration time on that sideline as they have taken the lead in the final seconds. Here's the Jaguar kick team now as they run up and send this one away. Well, this one, partner, was fun down to the very end. They got the points late, right before the whistle. Then the ensuing kickoff. They were hoping for magic on the other side, but couldn't get that spark. Fun if you won. <laughs> and fun for us because we got to watch it and call it. That magic that you were talking about didn't occur in the end, but what a game all the way through. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at